welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is Janae if you're new and welcome to a new video I make content all about wellness since around my own VSG weight loss journey fitness and nutrition and if any of that interests you then I hope you subscribe so on today's video I'm gonna be talking about how I got approved for my VSG weight loss surgery now as a disclaimer all of this is as of September 2023 by the time you probably watch this video things could change but as of what I know right now, this is the procedure and this was my procedure on how I got approved. So a little bit about me and my program because they are both very vital pieces of information when I talk about my approval process for weight loss surgery. So I am a active duty military spouse and I'm also an army veteran, which means I have my insurance through TRICARE. With that being said, my bariatric program is through the military because it was on a military installation ran by a military hospital under military departments and personnel and all of that good stuff. Our program covers anyone who is eligible for TRICARE, whether active duty spouse independence, veteran, veteran spouse independence. For veterans who are covered by the VA healthcare, BAMC has an agreement with the veteran healthcare to provide services. So again, this is specific to our program at BAMC at Fort Sam Houston in San Antonio, Texas. I'm not sure how it works at other duty stations. Okay, so now that we got all of that official stuff out the way, let's talk about my bariatric program. So I had my VSG weight loss surgery done at Fort Sam Houston, which is in San Antonio, Texas. Once I saw my PCM, which is my primary care doctor, I just got him up to speed on where I was at health wise, things that were actually affecting me health wise when it came to my joints, my feet, my blood pressure, my headache. So we talked about my health history and all of that stuff. I my PCM is actually the one who referred me to an obesity specialist that was in the clinic. When I spoke with the obesity specialist, she was the one who introduced me to weight loss surgery and the idea of weight loss surgery. We talked about my entire weight loss journey and things that I've done before to lose weight, my challenges, my wins and all that stuff. And she was the one who referred me to the bariatric program. And I'm gonna tag the videos that I've kind of already done on this already because I'm pretty sure I talked in more detail about our conversation. So what I didn't know at the time was that I could have self-referred myself to the bariatric program. I didn't even know it existed. And the little bit of information I knew about weight loss surgery, I thought I had to do something like Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig and then be failing on that for a certain amount of time and then I can get approved through it. So I didn't even know that they had a weight loss clinic and that I would be able to get into it. So the information that I'm giving you guys is specific to the bariatric program at Fort Sam Houston. I'm not sure what other military installations do or if they even have a bariatric program. Maybe some of the bigger bases do, but I'm not 100% sure. I can only speak on my journey at my clinic. But what I will say is a few people actually reached out to me because I've done these videos on TikTok before and a lot of them have reached out to me and said, your information has helped me. I've had someone who said that they used my information to get into the bariatric program at Fort Bragg in North Carolina. I've had someone who was in the Fort Sam Houston area do it. And then a lady that actually was coming down from Fort Hood, which is two and a half hours from Fort Sam in Texas. Um, based off of my information, she's going to my clinic now. So I would definitely take this information if you're military affiliated and see if there is a program like this on the installation you're at or one that's nearby. So now let's get into all of the steps that I had to do to actually get approved for my weight loss surgery. I went to the informational session on December 21st, 2022, and this is where I got all of the information that I needed to know to make an informed decision on if I even wanted to do this. So they talked about the clinic, the clinic history, the surgeons, all of the staff who worked there, including the psychiatrist, the registered dietitian. They talked about the surgeries that they actually perform because some surgeries they don't even do. I know that they do the VSG, the bypass, and then the the Y one, the one that's com a combination, but that's only for really specific patients. It's not offered to all patients. 
the program coordinator who's also a nurse sat there and answered all questions that we had had a whole slideshow it was a lot of information for us to take in so for our checklist he let us know that we had a year to complete it from the informational session the fastest you can do it is four weeks which is exactly what i did so as far as getting approved there really wasn't an approval process there was questionnaires that you had to fill out the obvious of what your weight is and your bmi is and all that stuff completing the checklist and pretty much getting scheduled the questionnaire include questions like your health diseases whether you have high blood pressure high cholesterol pre-diabetic diabetic stuff like that um we had to answer cardiac related questions because then that would just add on an extra layer that you would have to do for your checklist um if you're a woman of a certain age, man of a certain age, stuff like that. Um, so it was never an approval process. It was based off of the checklist and what you answered would add an additional layer to your checklist. So for me, for example, I answered on the checklist that I have high blood pressure, that I snore, but pretty much answering those questions made me have to do a sleep study. It's not a part of the actual checklist, but since I answered those questions, I had to do a sleep study, which would in turn diagnose me if I have sleep apnea. And if that was the case, then I would have to be on the CPAP machine for 30 days before I can even do my weight loss. Checklist here on my phone, but I'm going to insert it on the screen so you guys can follow along. But pretty much it was doing the informational session, doing four nutritional classes and those were offered in person and online at the time each class had a different topic for the week so we talked about nutrition in general we talked about working out the pre and the post-op diet the supplements that we have to take uh, lifelong diets all of that stuff is what we discussed and even now we have contact with the registered dietitian to continue to support us however long we need that support for we had to go to at least one support group session now the way fort sam houston support group session work is that it's only it's it's only for fort sam houston bariatric patients and it's pretty much exactly what i said a support group of actual patients that's been through the program whether they just had surgery or had surgery years ago given their journeys breaking us all up into groups and we get to ask questions to actual patients and they do this on a monthly basis which I loved because again I really like hearing the actual experience from people who have been through what I was about to go through. You had to do a psychiatric consult with the psychiatrist. We pretty much just talked about my history with losing weight and, you know, different eating disorders and just all of that mental stuff just to see where you were at mentally. And it's not a pass or a fail with the psychiatrist. It was to see where you were at to see if they needed to give you more appointments to support you on this journey or if you was ready to just go ahead. But there might have been more appointments that you would have to do, but it didn't disqualify you. You had to get your upper GI checked. Check was the worst part of this checklist. Let me just tell you that now. I had to go to radiology, drink this chalky, thick white substance, turn around in the machine, had it cold on my stomach as they take different pictures. I also had to swallow this pop rocky type of stuff that expanded in my mouth so that it would expand. And then I had to drink the white stuff again. It was this whole thing <laughs> just to make sure that my digestive tract, I guess, was good to go and to see if I had like acid reflux and whatever the case may be, I passed. We had to, of course, get some labs done. It was like 10 tubes of blood that I had to do fasted and, you know, they ran air tests. Again, if you answered a certain amount of questions on the questionnaire then you had to do the CPAP. The sleep study was done at home. I just had to strap myself to the little machine that they gave me and 
sleep with it pretty much and then bring it back up to the clinic when i sat down with the specialist from the sleep study clinic he told me that my number was right below the amount that i needed to have that would show that i passed so that i wouldn't have to do the cpap for that required 30 days and it didn't kind of delay my process luckily for me though i was still diagnosed with sleep apnea and so Again, I have TRICARE and it's all covered. They was able to get a CPAP machine out to me. So I was still using my CPAP machine before surgery. If you're a female, you had to let them know if you had a hysterectomy or your last pap smear. If you're a female above 40, then when was your last mammogram? If you're a male above 50, when was your last prostate check? everyone who was 50 and over had to do a colonoscopy you had to do a cardiac echo if you had cardiac related issues and then they also wanted to know your history with weight loss di different diets that you've tried and what was your current workout routine and eating habits and so this is another critical part and a plus for our bariatric program there is no weight requirement that you have to lose before surgery they take that pressure off of you. They want you to focus on starting to change your habits, um, starting to include your workout habits and starting to change your eating habits. So you didn't have to lose a certain amount of weight, but you also couldn't like gain a whole bunch of amount of weight because then that says to them that you're not serious about it. I got my checklist done in four weeks. I was done with my checklist at the end of January. And then I was able to have my pre-op appointment with my actual surgeon actually get to meet my surgeon and we discussed which surgery i would get which ended up being the vsg the gastric sleeve so we ended up scheduling it for march 2nd so faster than i thought it was going to be not to say that your process is going to be as fast as my process i was just lucky enough not to have anything come up and i had the time to knock everything out so i just pretty much got lucky i started my liquid diet on february 17th i had to do that for two weeks before my surgery and then another two weeks after but i'll go into the liquid diet in a separate video some last minute things that i also had to do before my surgery so i had to have another follow-up appointment with my surgeon again this one was just a virtual one and that was because my pre-op appointment was more than 30 days from my actual surgery so she just had to do a check-in and she pretty much called me like two weeks before my actual surgery just to make sure i didn't get sick nothing nothing has popped up two days before my surgery i had to sit with a bariatric nurse and do some last minute things so i had to do a pregnancy test i had to do a COVID test and i had to get my pre-op instructions COVID is definitely still going on so that was something i was very worried about was if i was going to be COVID positive because if i was and that was going to push back my surgery and of course I've already been on the liquid diet for two weeks and that would have extended the liquid diet but thankfully there was no hiccups no pregnancy no COVID positive she gave me my pre-op instructions as far as how my diet was going to look the day of and the day before the surgery because it was different from my pre-op liquid diet which I'll talk about in a separate video and she told me how to prepare my body for surgery so I had to use chlorhexidine wipes and the stuff for my nose and the rinse for my mouth and wash my hair and don't shave and all these little things just to prepare my body for surgery so that is it you guys that was my approval process if you want to call it that again this is a different layout for the program because it is military affiliated it's military ran so there was no real like approval but there were certain steps that needed to be done for me to secure my surgery i hope all of this information helped you especially if you are a military affiliated person and you're thinking about getting weight loss surgery or you never even thought that this was going to be a possibility for you like i did here it is here's the information take this information and see what is available to you at the duty station you're at if you enjoyed this video make sure you give it a big thumbs up comment down below if you have 
any other questions, if you want me to make any videos as far as my weight loss surgery process. Also share this with someone who might need it. I want to make sure that this information is out there because again, I didn't even know that this was going to be a possibility for me. And even as I was going through it, I didn't know the proper steps or just the easier steps I could have taken. Make sure you follow me on my social media. This is where I post my day to day on what I'm working out, what I'm eating, my weekly check ins and just, you know, just more of a connection over there. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I'll see you next time.